Uh, hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. If Costco is selling gold bars, then something is up. This one coming from the ISO GOAT here on Twitter. I didn't even know Costco sold gold bars, but apparently they do. And guys, they're selling like hotcakes. Costco, the warehouse style retailer famous for its unlimited staples, cheap hot dogs and bulk quantities has added another everyday essential for their members only customer base, bars of pure gold bouillon. According to a Business Insider article published Wednesday, Costco has been offering one ounce gold bars for purchase through their website. And if you think the rotisserie chicken sells out fast, they've got nothing on the yellow metal. So apparently they're selling like hotcakes, a very uh, easy way for the masses to be able to purchase gold. I gotta say, what a brilliant move. Here's a quote. I've gotten a couple of calls that people have seen online that we've been selling one ounce gold bars. This is coming from CFO Richard Galanti. He said during the retailer's fourth quarter earnings call on Tuesday, yes, but when we load them on the site, they're typically gone within a few hours and we limit to per member. According to Costco's website, the retailer sells one ounce bars uh, of 24 karat gold from South Africa's Rand Refinery for about 1950. For $30 more, customers can opt for an ounce of Pamp Suisse. Uh, both products average a 4.9 star rating on Costco's website. One imagines the South African gold would have a dry finish, while the Swiss is likely to have a rich, nutty bouquet. Though this cannot be confirmed as the company has been uncharacteristically stingy with free samples. Um, I mean, amazing. The fact that these guys are selling gold and that they're selling out, I think speaks volumes to, uh, you know, where people's heads are at with regards to their finances, with regards to the fledgling fiat currency that we all have in our bank accounts. And again, guys, reiterating the point, the financial system cannot be trusted. And so people are opting for alternatives like gold, silver, uh, you know, cryptocurrencies, obviously a big one too. But the fact that these things are selling very, very fast, I think, uh, again, does speak volumes. And this is an interesting, I, I would never think that Costco would be one of those companies that would, uh, would allow the sale of gold to the masses just because it is such a, a, I mean, you know, if you go by the theory of the powers that be do not want us to thrive, it's interesting. I mean, I got to say, it's interesting to see Costco doing this. You would think they'd try to make it harder for people to buy gold and silver as a hedge against, uh, you know, fledgling fiat. They want people loaded with fiat currency because, you know, with this planned demolition, they want the economy to go to zero and for people to have no other options. So, I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad I'm seeing you know, people, by and large, these are just regular everyday folk, I'm assuming, too. Uh, buying up gold from Costco, it is, I guess, an easier way to, uh, you know, acquire that gold. The one thing I don't like about this is that they do sell it online. You can't go into the store and buy it with cash anonymously. That is, uh, I guess, the benefit of uh, going to a gold dealer specifically. Anyway, thought I'd bring that to you guys. Wanted to thank the ISO GOAT for bringing that up. Wrath of Kahneman here. Uh, also mentioning this brand new study, guys, this just came out September 2023, recent study out of East Asian Economic Review in sample and out of sample predictability of cryptocurrency returns. Now, here is the review. This paper investigates whether the price of cryptocurrency is determined by the U.S. dollar index, the price of investment assets such as gold and oil, and the implied volatility of the KOSPI. Overall, the returns on cryptocurrency are best predicted by the trading volume of the cryptocurrency, both in sample and out of sample. Uh, the estimates of gold in the dollar index are negative in the return prediction, though they are not significant. The dollar index, gold, and cryptocurrency seem to share characteristics which hedging instruments have in common. So an interesting study. I mean, uh, I gotta be honest, I have not read the full thing. I will link this in the description for you guys. One of the interesting points here that Rath Economy does mention, since the increase in the implied volatility of the stock market index returns may suggest a fear for market instability, it may stimulate investors' interest in cryptocurrency and thereby increase the return on cryptocurrency to hedge against market risk. So are they suggesting that, uh, you know, investing in the crypto market could in fact hedge against the traditional market? And, uh, you know, I'm assuming maybe not right now because the market is so small in comparison and, uh, you know, there's just not that many people in the crypto market compared to, let's say, other, uh, you know, broader regulated markets around the world. But guys, could this change? They continue by saying the estimates of the Dubai gold and the DXY, which is the dollar index, are negative in almost all estimates of the Ripple coin return prediction regressions, though they are not statistically significant over the whole forecasting horizon as reported in Table 4. The Dubai gold DXY and the XRP uh, seem to share characteristics which hedging instruments have in common. 
When investors take notice of imminent market risks, they increase the demand for one of these alternative hedging assets and thereby increase the returns on the asset. So what they're predicting here is, you know, to hedge against, uh, you know, some of these traditional assets, people will invest in something like XRP and they use XRP as the example here. And then that XRP will in fact go up in price. So uh, that's a self-fulfilling prophecy almost, uh, giving them the results they want. The hedged asset does go up in price. So an interesting review here. Uh, I, I might take the time to read this uh, when I do have time. It is quite lengthy. But uh, again, guys, I will link this in the description of the video for you guys. Wanted to thank the Wrath of Kahneman here for posting that. Some other news came out last month that uh, I think flew under the radar. Seems like Interledger. The Interledger Foundation is now a sponsor member of Mojo Loop. And this, guys, has been since late August. This one courtesy of Anders here on Twitter. The Mojo Loop Foundation recently welcomed the Interledger Foundation as our newest sponsor member. Now, you know, Mojo Loop is connected to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And uh, Mojo Loop does also have a RippleNet connection, too. Like the Mojo Loop Foundation, ILF is focused on increasing financial inclusion and will be working with the community to help advance our mission of enabling digital financial services to all. Uh, to learn more about the organization and its involvement with Mojo Loop, we sat down with Brianna Marbury, CEO of the Interledger Foundation. So again, from August of this year, and uh, you guys can see here, sponsor members include the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Google, Interledger Foundation, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, and of course, Ripple. So uh, direct connections with Ripple, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation through Mojo Loop, uh, Interledger Foundation, and of course, the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Uh, I, I still think the verdict is out on Google, although I would not be surprised if there was a connection there too. So I wanted to thank Anders for that. Another one here, guys, from Anders on Twitter. Reminder about ISO 20022 and what Bob Way said, a former Ripple employee. Okay, extremely helpful for Ripple's bank sales team. Now, I mentioned this in a video a few months ago, but I thought it'd be important to reiterate it once again. Bob Way did say this, okay, ISO 20022 is way bigger than you might think at first. Guys, this is going to break the system right open. Okay, with this new technology, we are going to see the new brands taking over DLT technology, cryptocurrencies being utilized in that real world utility. And as Bob Way says, the sales team for banks, this is basically like candy, getting these big banks on board. The reason the ISO 20022 transition is extremely helpful to Ripple's bank sales team is this means that every bank is required to implement the new technology. So if the bank is required to implement the new technology, well, they're going to have to look somewhere for a solution. And since, uh, you know, in the past, a lot of these banks, I guess I should rewind a little bit, a lot of these banks uh, were using XCurrent, the XCurrent product, when Ripple introduced that in 2016, 2017. So a lot of them already have a relationship with Ripple, which was such a smart move. And then, you know, you, you get them hooked on the technology that isn't using XRP, and then boom, ISO 20022 integration. Let's move them on to the latest system. Well, we already have a partnership with Ripple, so why not continue to go with them? Because, uh, you know, what we've been doing thus far has been great. Uh, Bob Way continues, this is the number one reason most bank integrations don't happen. New system development is expensive and risky. Uh, mistakes can generate bank losses or fines. Bankers get fired. The person you are negotiating with must have a product budget, development budget, risk appetite. So all things that bankers, uh, you know, generally shy away from. With a mandatory ISO 20022 change, though, the person you are negotiating with only needs to have the product budget. Money for development has already been allocated elsewhere. Nobody gets fired for following a mandate. That makes a sale so much easier for Ripple guys. And this is why we'll likely see more Ripple partnerships coming down the pike in the future. But even if banks wait for a settlement, their ISO 20022 upgraded system becomes much easier for Ripple to integrate with then. The biggest impact is going to be that even smaller banks are going to be upgrading their system. So that is a change that uh, I don't think uh, a lot of these big banks were, um, were ready for in, in some ways. That creates a much larger pool of ODL compatible banks. So now the small banks can realistically compete with the big banks, whereas, you know, they were not on a level playing field before. Now they're going to be on a level playing field. Polyonymous down here saying, you know, also with the ISO, or sorry, uh, the Temenos T24 presentation, this was from back in 2016 and links a YouTube video here, IIRC, they are aiming to ease the burden on staff and training by building a bridge interface. So even Ripple enabled Temenos was doing it as early as 2016. And I will link all this in the description for you guys if you want to watch that video or if you want to, uh, you know, read this tweet thread further. Anyway, I wanted to thank Anders here and uh, Polyonymous on Twitter just for posting that. Now, the ISO GOAT also brought this up, an older piece of news, but something we should remember. Okay, shout out to my guy, Mr. Man on this heat. RTGS was built using Microsoft Azure. 
and Microsoft Azure uses Ripple's technology. Now, real-time gross settlement, guys. RTGS, I think we should understand. I know for some of you guys, it might, uh, all these concepts might be a little confusing. You know, you throw a bunch of terms at people and you're like, well, yeah, isn't that the same as ISO 20022 or RippleNet or whatever? Well, no, real-time gross settlement systems are specialist fund transfer systems where the transfer of money or securities takes place from one bank to any other bank in real time. Uh, on a gross basis. So settlement in real time means a payment transaction is not subjected to any waiting period. That is the definition of real time gross settlement. So giving you some history, as of uh, 1985, three central banks implemented RTGS systems. Well, by the end of 2005, RTGS systems had been implemented by 90 central banks. So this has been uh, a system that has been slowly being integrated throughout the 80s up until today. Now, why this is important, guys, they are modernizing RTGS. Okay, RTGS Global reveals their plans. So here's what happened. RTGS Global finally revealed more details on what they were working on, a global near real-time payment network that will also lock the liquidity required to settle the transaction, all powered by Microsoft Azure technology. Now that connection is important because Microsoft Azure built on Ripple. The director said uh, they have various users testing the application. Now this was again an older article, but guys just wanted to bring up this partnership because it is important. We have several customers taking advantage of the blockchain as a service platform and an active pipeline of partners getting onboarded. Gray believes the platform Azure is providing tremendous value to its customer base who are innovating with these new technologies. And as you guys can see up here, built on Ripple. Now, just to give you guys uh, a sense, these are the articles, I will link them in the description. Again, an older article, but uh, I think that uh, the connections here are valuable and uh, important to note. RTGS, again, this article was from September 2020, so only a few years ago. But note here, guys, lock the liquidity that requires to settle the transaction. If these guys are using Microsoft Azure, and as per this older article here, we see that it's built on Ripple, obviously, I think we can make this connection here. RTGS looking to unlock liquidity. XRP provides that liquidity. Finally, a true instant and global scheme is born with no traditional banking partners involved. Hmm, what does that sound like to you? What an historic moment for the record. Uh, all the real-time schemes today, including faster payments in the UK or the single European payment area or SEPA instant payment are all pre-funded. Now that is changing uh, too very, very soon. SEPA, I recently did a video on that and I will link that up here in the top right-hand corner. Uh, banks have to anticipate their liquidity need, which is a real hair pulling activity. However, with RTGS Global, this complexity vanishes along with the cost of unlocking unnecessary extra funds that could be invested somewhere else. So the removal of the Nostro and Vostros, guys, this is what's important. And the RTGS system looking to modernize this. Now, another one from the ISO GOAT here on Twitter. Shout out to Mahadev for this, my guy. RTGS Global website states, that they use tokens, including XRP for cross-border settlement. So there you go. The icing on the cake. They even mention XRP. RTGS head of business administration, Alan uh, Vershoyle, uh, or Versho Vershoyle uh, shares picks about the recent event on efficient and secure settlement future. He has significant past experience in managing cash and liquidity, guys. And here's what he said. It was a real pleasure to host the third meeting of the RTGS Global Bank's working group as we took advantage of being able to get together in person at Cybos. And this looks to be a fairly recent post, guys. Uh, there was enthusiasm amongst the key players who gathered to discuss critical topics and development from across the banking industry. It is a hugely exciting time for RTGS as we continue to build momentum in uh, bringing together many of the leading minds in global banking to build a more efficient and secure settlement future. And we very much are looking forward to the next bank's working group meeting in November. So from Cybos 2023, which just happened in Toronto, RTGS continuing to build. And this guy's from Mr. Man, a statement by RTGS Global CTO said, we use a coin or token could even be XRP. Now he was ultimately referring to this interview with Market Treacher speaking with the OMFIF at the DMI regarding the liquidity issues that the globe is experiencing. I will link this in the description, guys. I'm not going to, I was going to play you guys this clip, but I don't think it's actually too necessary. Marcus Treacher, of course, used to work for Ripple and has since founded RTGS Global. So putting that into perspective here, I think we can see where this is going. Down here though, guys, as of November, 2022, where rtgs.global uses blockchain. And guys, you can see down here, rtgs global uses a coin slash token, could even 
BXRP. So noting that Marcus Treacher connection, also noting how these guys plan on developing the future infrastructure, providing liquidity. They even said this back in 2020, the liquidity is going to be key. We also have the Microsoft Azure connection from several years ago, guys, built on Ripple technology. I think all signs are pointing to this landscape where liquidity will be active. XRP will be that cryptocurrency, maybe not the only one, but certainly involved in this new financial system using real-time gross settlement. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.